America grew up on soda and Ritalin. They can't stand real wine. So they modified the wine in, in, in Napa Valley. And they made it like sugar, sugar wine. Oh, I was going to get to a health thing too today. Wait, we wanted to talk about this. I saw another headline I wanted to get to. Got to go down the old listy. Here it is. Oh, listy, 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 where are you? Here it is. This caught my eye. Half of you as adults have diabetes, a pre-diabetes study says. Oh, oh, am I ready for this one? If you ever went out to dinner with me, you probably wouldn't be happy after a while because I, I look at people, middle-aged people, like idiot children after they eat a big fat meal that would kill an animal. And would you like a dessert? And like little children, they go with a smile, yeah. <laughs> well, we have chocolate ice cream. We have tiramisu. Would you like some? And the idiots sit there with a double spoon eating and yeah, yeah, stuffing it down their gullets. They wonder why they have, they have diabetes. No one tells them. The doctor doesn't know any better. The doctor's on a pill. How could they know any better if the doctor's stupid eats the same garbage? Of course there's diabetes with the amount of sugar that's being eaten in this country. You wouldn't feed an animal what humans be, human beings eat in a restaurant. Dessert, number one deadly meal in the history of the world. I never eat it, by the way, ever. 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 And I'm teaching you something of great importance. The sugar disease is the number one killer in America. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So Hillary causes the greatest refugee crisis since World War II. And now she wants a 25% gun tax to make sure you can't defend yourself from the, uh, from the onslaught. Did I catch your attention yet? Half of you as adults have diabetes. I went off on, on, on desserts. Never eat them. Poison. There should be a dessert tax or no dessert at all, ever. Poison, especially for adults. I know what it does to children is bad enough. Affects their brains, makes them hyperactive. Read Feingold's seminal work from the 70s, which have been thrown in the garbage by the drug peddlers called pediatricians who want to just drug your children. They don't tell you a damn thing about how to stop, stop the activity. Just take, give them drugs, that's all. Then you see the grown-ups sitting there eating like, oh, like children, mmm. Wonder why they're diabetes. No idea, the doctor doesn't tell them because he's got a customer there. You want to kill the customer. Another thing, I was, this is not a health thing, but this bothers me. I just ordered a Japanese lunch, I ate it. So I always throw the chopsticks in the garbage. I don't, even, I don't want splinters in my food. That's why we invented a fork in, in the West. I'm gonna eat of sticks. The reason they ate sticks in the East is they didn't have forks. So they cut down a tree and ate with twigs. And still, eating. yeah, give me chop. I love all the liberals sitting in the Japanese restaurants to show you how smart they are to eat with a chopstick. They want to be accepted by the owner. Get out of here. Bring me a fork, Johnson. Just get it over here. I'm going to be the, the chopsticks. Now, here's why I don't like chopsticks. Forget that they're stupid to use, number one. It's like an effete thing to sit in a restaurant with the sticks. Well, the libs try to show you how good they are, what good little boys and girls they are, the schmendricks. Do you realize it's causing deforestation in Asia, chopsticks? I know you don't. See, I see things macro, micro, macro, micro, macro. Billions of these things are used every day by Asians. And where do they come from? Trees. They cut down trees. Chopsticks are made from trees. Deforestation is occurring because of the use of chopsticks. Make them buy stainless steel forks. Make them out of aluminum. Ban the chopstick, or you make them out of some reusable you know, material like porcelain. Do you understand how intelligent that is? But no, dismiss it because I said it. Because some creep on PBS didn't give you a whole show on it. A three-hour show on the, the danger of the chopstick. Chopsticks decimating forests. New York Times. Use of chopsticks decimating forest lands in Asia. Detailed story by Eric Schmidt. Biggest schmuck that ever wrote in the history of journalism. Eric Schmidt of the New York Times. I love it. I love all the bylines. He, he wrote this too? Oh, here's one from Eric Schmidt. Let's listen. Here we go. Here. U.S. to revamp a rebel force combating ISIS. Falling short in Syria. Program is to focus on skills and tactics of moderates. By Eric Schmidt and Ben Hubbard. In other words... Obama's big lie about funding moderates in Syria has been exposed for what it is, a big lie. Rebel force combating ISIS. 
And yesterday, Kerry tries to start World War III, that liar, by attacking Putin, saying Russia could escalate the, the division in Syria. You idiot, you. You know that you're provoking Putin by trying to overthrow Assad. He's not letting Assad go, Kerry. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Hillary Clinton destroyed the Middle East with the Arab Spring. Obama's destroying America with his madness of bringing in immigrants, refugees. Meanwhile, according to TV footage released by Breitbart, Muslim refugees were chanting Allahu Akbar and F.U., attacking citizens, throwing human feces. The footage that TV networks don't broadcast. So-called refugees in Budapest chanted Allah Akbar and F.U., while other refugees, Muslims, attacked an old Italian lady and threw feces at bystanders in Germany as Germany announced that it would be prepared to take in 500,000 asylum seekers every year. Now, what's odd about this is that there's a vast right wing in Europe that has come out over and over again in the last few years saying no more refugees, and yet Cameron, Merkel, and the others are going in the exact opposite direction. How is it that Merkel, who was a center-right politician, is now acting like a fanatical left-wing, by the way, insane person? You know and I know what's going to happen in Germany. You know and I know what has to happen in Germany. You and I both know what's going to happen in the West if this keeps up. You know I know it's coming. Why are they doing it? People keep, keep saying they're not stupid. They know what's going to happen if you bring in a half a million refugees, mainly Muslims, into Germany when there's such a strong, powerful right-wing movement. And by the way, a center-right movement. And by the way, a centrist movement saying no more refugees. Why Muslims? Why not Christians from Syria? There's a reason. They want civil war. They want civil unrest. They want it here. They want it there. They want it everywhere. And they say, well, why would they want that? I don't think you understand how serious this issue really is. I mean, I've been dancing around having some fun today because I, if I did this for three hours, you wouldn't listen. I'll give it to you in a nutshell because someone asked me this in a car over the weekend. Why would the leadership of the West be designing to destroy the West? Moreover, with Muslims who will never integrate into, into their nations. Why? Chaos. Upheaval. Civil unrest. Why? Who do the people turn to in those times? The government. Gives the government what? More power over who? The people. End of story. The government unto itself is a diseased entity. It's a crazed animal. The word government means crazed animal run by power-mad lunatics. And it thinks only how it could expand its own power. So it doesn't matter about the consequences. If the cities burned to the ground, it wouldn't matter, as long as their power increases. Look at the power-mad socialist lunatics who run Baltimore. She burnt the city to the ground, that idiot mayor. Has she been fired yet? No. She's only gotten worse. Let's take a look at Baltimore. That's what they want in the world. And if you think it's not going to happen here, I, I wish to God I could agree with you. I wish to God I could agree with you, but I can't agree with you. Now we got a meddlesome pope espousing the same big line. Take in a family, global warming, same thing. All part of the same game. Let's take some calls. I haven't taken many today. Let's see. John, WJR, what's your opinion? Make it fast. Yes, Michael. I don't like this pope. I don't want him preaching his leftist pronouncements to the American body politic. But I object to your argument against him speaking on the basis of the misuse of a usually leftist phony argument of separation of church and state. That's usually used to preclude Judeo-Christian influence in American political discourse. Why would you as a conservative invoke that phrase equally as inappropriately as the left does? Why is it inappropriate? We're supposed to have a separation. I didn't listen to me carefully because I've covered this for many years. I didn't say a separation from church. I said a separation of church and state. Big difference. But that's a phrase used by the left, which is inappropriately used. It has nothing to do... Well, it's not, it's not inappropriately used in this case, John. You know and I know that the Pope is only being allowed to speak because he's espousing leftist tripe. Fine, but there's nothing in the Constitution that precludes uh, Americans using uh, 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 religious influence in their lives. It just has to do with establishing a state. Well, now, okay, now, wait, now you're touching on a, on a very germane point. You said religious influence in their life. But this pope is a political figure. He's not strictly a religious figure. He's a hybrid. He's half politician and half religious figure. So he comes here and starts espousing politics. I object. 
Okay, but don't but don't use that phrase because the 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 left uses that phrase all too inappropriately. Right, so what would you use to say it's inappropriate for the Pope not to speak before Congress? And by the way, you sound like a very uh, uh, educated man. Can you name a time in the past when a Pope addressed Congress? No, and I don't want him to do it this time. Okay, so why do you think out of the blue suddenly this bouncer from the Vatican is being allowed to address Congress? Well, I, I don't know about that, but I just object to the use of the phrase separation of church and state because it's been used entirely inappropriately. All right, so you're using an arcane here. argument, but we're not discussing the real issue. The issue is why is this guy allowed to, to address Congress? That's what bothers me. He is a politician. He's going to espouse political viewpoints in Congress with the uh, dignity of the church around him. You know, the skull cap, the vestments, everyone's going to get in their hands and knees. Oh, I mean, the Pope was there. Pope, Pope, we Pope this, Pope that. What Pope? He's a politician. Right. I don't agree. I don't disagree with you. All right, but I heard your point. I understand that I don't agree with it because I never said there should be a separation of church and state or a separation from church and state. I just don't like religion in my political world. I don't live in a theocracy. I don't happen to live in Iran. The new friends of Barack Obama, atheist, are the Iranians all of a sudden. All of a sudden, Mr. Atheist loves a theocracy. How does that work? Can't figure that one out. No, like I can't figure anything out. Okay, what else do you want to talk about? WABC, Brandon, you're holding a long time. What's on your mind, Brandon? Hey, uh, Dr. Savage, uh, it's nice to finally get a hold of you. Um, about the... Uh, no, you, you Actually, you never got a hold of me, but it's nice to have you on the show. What's on your mind? I'm a first-time caller. I want to talk about the uh, Muslim migration crusade. That's okay, do it in thir 30 seconds or less. I think you've said it all in those three words. Muslim Migration Crusade. Is there anything to add? Enough. And I think you can put two and two. Thank you. Yeah, Muslim Crusade. But the question is, why are atheists behind it, of the EU? Why do they want to flood Europe with Muslims? When there's already enough strife in Europe from the Muslims who won't integrate. Why would they do it? I explained to you why. They want civil unrest. Because who do people turn to during civil unrest? Turn to the government for help. So who gains the power? Government. Government is a beast. Government is a monster. Government wants more power, doesn't care if it burns cities to the ground. Look what Abraham Lincoln did in the name of uh, beauty and peace and freeing the slaves. He burnt cities to the ground. The great Abraham Lincoln that people worship. Look what the look what Union Army did in the South. They burnt cities to the ground. Did you know that? Oh, don't get me started on the, the lies from top to bottom. Let's see. ISIS claims it has smuggled thousands of jihadists into Europe as refugees. Middle East Muslims go on rampage at Austria's border. It's all on michaelsavage.com. This is the most important of the stories in many ways. Conservative dissent is brewing inside the Vatican. The communist pope demoted several top guys when he took over the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the church. He took down some of the heads of the church because they were too conservative, meaning they believed in uh, Catholicism. They didn't believe enough in his Marxism. They are now foment fomenting a rebellion against him. Chicago, eight killed, 46 wounded in Labor Day weekend shootings. That's all. Democrats' reluctant support for Iran nuclear deal emboldens, oppo embodel, emboldens opponents. Every time I look at Debbie Wasserman Schultz, I ask myself, what medication is she not on that she should be on? I just look at her face. Either what is she on that she should be on? Or should, what is she not on that she should be on? Or what is she on that she, that's inappropriate for her? Only her psychiatrist would know for sure. A Muslim flight attendant who won't serve alcohol suspended. Uh, another one, recent convert. She takes a job as an airline stewardess. Then she suddenly discovers she's a Muslim. Then she says, I'm not going to serve alcohol. So she files a lawsuit with the help of CAIR. The, the Trojan horse, C-A-I-R. They can look at her face. You'll see all you need to know with a big smile. She found religion all of a sudden. She wants to serve alcohol. What are you doing as a flight attendant? It's not a religious belief. It's a job duty. What do you care what your religion is? You don't like to serve alcohol. Take a job in a mosque. Or take a job in a library. What are you flying on an airplane? You're going to tell people they have no right to have a drink because you don't like it? Of course that's what they want, C-A-I-R. Everything they can do to get away with getting over on people, they do. That's all. And they have their little friend in the White House to help them. A Muslim flight attendant says she was suspended by ExpressJet 
for refusing to serve alcohol in accordance with their Islamic faith. I love those words. They're so sensitive when they say the words Islamic faith, CNN. You never see that Jewish faith or Christian.